Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Another big week in crypto, prices sliding, altcoins bleeding. I'm going to talk about what's happening, why it's happening, and walk you through those headlines. So let's start off with our favorite segment on this day in history. This time last year, Bitcoin was trading at 2750 and Bitcoin Cash had just had that hard fork and it was trading at around $200. So we traded this a lot, you know, on the way down, we shorted it to make some money and then I recommended buying back in and holding Bitcoin Cash as a hedge in your portfolio. So interesting times, um, obviously prices are still up a long ways from 12 months ago. We need to put things in perspective. But this time two years ago, a lot of people weren't in this space. And Bitfinex was hacked. Now, this was the second biggest hack at the time, 120,000 Bitcoin worth around 70 million. And um, I went through my email, guys, and actually found this email. Now, it was weeks before we got any sort of closure or answers and knew what was going on. So at the time, all we were told about was this hack. And later on, we found out that the losses were to be socialized across all users, a 36% haircut, even though it was only a few actual Bitcoin accounts um, that got hacked and those of us that were holding Ethereum and other coins were all bailed in and got these IOU tokens and I'm going to talk about that story in more depth in a whole episode because it was a big situation at the time. It really was headlines um, but again, I'll expand on that in the future. Speaking of Bitcoin Cash, um, this caused a bit of news and back and forth on Twitter this week. So this is Travel by Bits website, flybybit.com.au where you can see what people are spending. So this chart was originally posted here which reflects um, the value of transactions and then it was changed to the um, number of transactions so if there's a hundred people you know 46 are using Bitcoin 29 Litecoin 15 Bitcoin cash and then so on there with Ethereum and Dash so there's been some bigger purchases with Bitcoin cash and that community was a little bit upset the chart got changed to this but guys as I said, either way, it's just really positive that we're starting to get people use all these currencies in everyday life. Um, the Queensland government got on board this week supporting cryptocurrency and tourism. So it's getting mainstream. This is what we want. Let's not argue about who's using what. Um, I tweeted that this made me feel like a little kid at Christmas, really. Um, CZ, who's arguably the biggest personality in crypto at the moment, retweeted uh, a video we did. Bi Binance Coin was the strongest of all the charts, so check out that video Charting Man Dan and I did where we run through 10 coins quickly, a little bit of fundamentals of what's going on, and then a look at the charts and tie that all together. So pretty cool stuff there. I was pretty stoked with a CZ retweet. Now, one of the things that we spoke about in our premium service this week was um, money supply. We often forget in Australia that money is being printed. We hear about US and um, Europe, Japan, quantitative easing, but great post here from Adam Poulton, who's one of the original um, Bitcoin investors. We had our first ever Bitcoin meetup in 2013. It was just the two of us. Um, but yeah, M3 money supply in Australia has grown by 9% on average over the past 30 years, which is just really crazy to think about. Speaking of, you know, the powers that be in central banks, and I know this caused a bit of a stir. Bill Clinton, the keynote speaker for Ripple. Now, Ripple is very polarizing in the crypto community. All I'd say is for, for you, if you're out there and you're not really sure what this all means, now, Ripple has chosen to take that path of trying to partner up with banks and being that payment system replacing SWIFT and whatnot. But look, if you're not familiar with Bill Clinton and the history of the Clintons, I'd recommend you Google pay to play and the Clinton body count and have a read about some of those conspiracy theories and stories um, and, and things that have occurred in the past. And just, just be aware of who you might be getting into bed with once you start to go down this path. That's all I'll say there, guys. Now, last week we saw huge losses in the stock market in Facebook and Twitter. Now, Tesla has just reported $717 million loss in a quarter, their biggest ever quarterly loss. Now, this all sort of ties together with what I've been saying. Um, you know, money doesn't die and go to money heaven, as one of my um, old YouTube channels I used to subscribe to, Greg Manorino, used to say. It. Money is looking for a home. There's never been more money in the world out there particularly in the investment space in the low-yield environment, looking for a home. So it needs to find somewhere to go. 
And sure enough, the next day or um, you know the following day after that, Apple had great earnings um, and it was the first company to ever hit a trillion dollars. Now, at the time, there was lots of people writing off Apple many years ago. You know, it's been through cycles, but just remember how early on we are in this space, how much money is out there. I'm sure there's going to be more companies hit a trillion dollars, and that's the new you know kind of market cap for a large, biggest companies in the world now. Keep those market caps in mind. We know Bitcoin's, you know, just a bit over a hundred billion now. So, plenty of money out there. It needs to find a home. People want to invest in tech. Stock markets at record highs. We've touched on all this stuff before, guys. I love trying to tie all this macro stuff together for you. Speaking of all this, um, I tweeted that diversification is key, and too many people, I think, go all in on crypto and all in on altcoins, and they're the ones that are really hurting now. So. I've always been an advocate of owning some gold and silver. Um, I, I love reading about commodities and those super cycles. Now, I read a book by Marin Katusa called The Cold War, and he talks about Russia and their um, control over the energy sector in terms of their in-ground oil reserves, um, uranium processing that they basically control 100% of yellow cake production. So I bought some uranium energy um, corp shares after reading that book at 78 cents, and that's been one of the best performers in my US stock portfolio with AMD there and obviously I'm also short high yield debt. But guys, learn about this stuff. I'm going to be talking about it a lot more in our um, premium group and being diversified is, is so key. And I know a lot of people aren't from the some of the messages I'm getting and, and reading. We spoke about this last week um, in terms of this super cycle here and if it is time to really look at commodities. So that ties into what we just spoke about then um, and obviously I did mention in our group that I'm really looking forward to teaching people about options so rather than just buying a stock and holding it you know using options can create leverage you can sell sell puts buy calls if you think something's going to go up all this stuff might sound like a foreign language um, if you're interested um, the details are always down below, guys, on how to join our, our premium service, and we are going to be talking about all this. So rather than just buying some uranium shares, you can you know get some fancy options positions going with these uranium ETFs um, with puts and calls to create um, a lot better return on capital. So the race is on, as I keep saying, in Coinbase custody, exploring more assets here. There's a, definitely a few surprises on this list. Um, you know, Ripple is the one that um, that community has been waiting on. You know, EOS, Monero, Neo. It's great to see some of these big names there. Um, v Chain had a huge week, but Coinbase want to expand now that the race is on. Now that everyone's trying to bring on more coins, you know, they've been milking those fees and 100,000 customers a day at one stage. The competition's there now, guys. How many times have I said it? Everyone wants you as a customer, um, and it's just awesome to see how more and more coins are going to be added. So VeChain, um, big partnership this week. As a pharmacist, I absolutely love seeing this, guys. Blockchain is a great use case for supply chain, traceability, logistics, pharmaceutical goods that needed to be kept cold, all that sort of thing. It all ties together. You guys know I'm really bullish on a number of those logistics supply chain projects and there's plenty of room for more than one to succeed as we see you know v chain focusing on china we've got others focusing in, in on korea obviously we've got some local projects here in australia so it's just great to see now this is getting into the really big news the bullish news so northern trust uh, 10 trillion dollars of um, of assets under management here Looking to get into Bitcoin, well, I've spoken about it that these large firms aren't going to muck around with sort of smaller utility tokens and, and that sort of thing until there's more legislation. They're going to start at the top with Bitcoin, um, you know, maybe Ethereum as well. Now we've had the SEC come out and say that that's likely not a security. So it's, it's great to see all this infrastructure getting getting in place we know it's happening and obviously the even bigger news the big the biggest news of 2018 guys i cannot believe that markets are down um, since this this happened but i'm going to talk about that as well so um ice exchange here intercontinental exchange teaming up with new york stock exchange microsoft starbucks huge names this is going to be headlines everywhere this week to create this um 
this backed platform to enable institutions to seamlessly buy, store, and sell crypto. Now, why this is different is really that they're going to have um, offline storage and transfer of the private key. So if you want to sell, it basically goes back into their their pool of capital, and it's not a you know, transaction on the blockchain per se. So really moving um, a second layer, I guess, for the custodianship of private keys rather than moving Bitcoins from one Bitcoin wallet to another. But this is, a, um, I guess, a one-day futures contract, so it has settlement each day. But unlike the Bitcoin futures that are traded at the moment, this is back to K. They have to buy Bitcoin, um, and that's going to put demand, and hopefully, a lot of upwards pressure on the price. Great to see. And there was a paragraph um, in a great article I read that really went unnoticed by the community as well. And just another reason that this should have got more of a bullish reaction, it was that they want to team up and particularly Starbucks to make this a world currency of sorts. So not only you know investment in 401ks and retirement funds and all that, but really concentrating on the payment side of Bitcoin, making it that currency we use in our everyday lives. So two or three absolutely huge news announcements, but price haven't reacted the way we wanted to. Um, and I will talk about that shortly. So what's the sentiment like? I, I, thank you to everyone that partakes in these polls. What's Bitcoin's next big move for $1,000? And on crypto Twitter, it's pretty even split here. Um, on the Facebook groups here, guys, which is more of that retail investor, a, a lot of people, you know, v- huge, what's this, about 70% saying the next big move is down. So retail investors are fearful that the next move is down and almost have come to terms with it. And in our group, not quite as bad, about maybe 60% saying the next big move will be down. But really with both those samples, it's just interesting to see that everyone's kind of saying, yeah, I think we're going down. And you know, often the herd's wrong when everyone's expecting something it can already be priced in. And that's another thing to mention that markets price in all available information. Now, sometimes they take a little while to digest that information and you've got to use that to your advantage, whether it's a little retail investor or these big hedge funds. When they get announcements, they've got to have these meetings and sign paperwork to to move large amounts of capital in and out. So yeah, they've got their stop losses and the amount that they trade day to day, but use what you can to your advantage as a retail investor and be nimble because sometimes short periods um, of a rush of irrational behavior present opportunities. So this is the Bitcoin uh, weekly chart here. We're still getting that uptick in volume, which we haven't seen for a number of weeks. Let's just go into the daily chart here and put this on log scale again for you guys. So it's been a terrible week, which I'm really shocked about after the news that we've had. So last week we were trading it 8,200, we'd been talking about, you know, rejection from the 200-day moving average. We got out of this Bollinger Band. We're having a pullback. Litecoin and Ethereum were trading down under their slower moving averages, and now Bitcoin's kind of, um, you know, caught up to the downside, I guess. But the other things we wanted to note here, and let's bring up our cycle brackets. So in cycle bracket theory, we'd had a couple of right-hand translations where we're stair-stepping higher. But then once we lose lose the level that the bracket starts at, you know, it, it says that weakness should continue for the length of this bracket. So the next key date we've got here is the 14th of August, which kind of lines up. It's funny how these things continue to play out around the date of the ETF. So it doesn't mean we continue down the whole way. We can we can get a bounce um, and, then, and then, you know, even sideways action. But what it says is that we're unlikely to get back above 7,800 anytime in the next week. And this is when we need to see a bounce to start to rebuild to, um, the higher lows if we're going to get a push up. So what the sentiment now tells me is that if the Bitcoin ETF does get approved or any sort of positive news this week regardless of the ETF any positive news is going to give us a big big kick in price now if we were to get out of left field and this is not likely at all guys I'm putting this at less than 10% chance that the ETF gets approved that's to me is a 30% move I really think we'd go to $10,000 over the next 24 hours and again that's not likely but now that it's not priced in 
you know, the other scenarios that we have continue huge run ups and then we get approved and the good news is already priced in. So in some ways, this weakness is good because yes, we might have one more leg down and that's what a lot of people are looking at now. But that to me would be that final flush and the retail investor that doesn't quite understand that had all their hopes and their leverage on the ETF, that represents them giving up if the ETF gets pushed back or, or declined. Whereas we know that really that's not the determining factor for Bitcoin's success by any means. So I saw some other charts on Twitter this week, you know, um, an NVT count talking about the amount of Bitcoin that's actually being used in circulation. Uh, and, and that represents, um, you know, at a level that means we're going to be going down. So that indicator gives us these three bounces is what they were talking about. So bounce, fall, bounce, fall. And now this is the last bounce. We have one more fall. You know, Bitcoin isn't actually being used as it, as it should in circulation. And I saw that bit of chat on Twitter. So along with all these other indicators I've mentioned, yeah, there's a lot of things starting to line up. And it's funny how market manipulation and the news can can coincide with announcements and technical levels to really flush out the weak hands and make no doubt that the whales are going to be aware of this. And that one thing I spoke about was the record longs. Bitcoin is not going to go up and make everyone rich when Bitcoin longs were right up near their record highs. And that's what we've seen lately. That's, that's dropped off. So that's healthy. We need that to continue to to drop off um, it's the same on the downside if we have a record number of shorts the markets aren't going to tank and make everyone money so now that that's really come down a lot it probably is more likely that the downside path it is not making everyone rich and that makes it more likely in my opinion so that's enough about bitcoin there guys i think i touched on most of those points i wanted to make last week ethereum was trading at 465 look as we said, it was around these slow moving averages. It's given up a little bit. It hasn't had you know as bad a week as Bitcoin, but the next levels we're looking at now are right down around 370 here. And then that 340, that would be the last I see Ethereum going in this final capitulation if it lines up with Bitcoin. Litecoin, we still haven't had a weekly close below $80. Let's see if we can recover um, from that mark in the next 24 hours. But again, there's lots of just little supports all the way down here um, with Litecoin. It's tracking Bitcoin's price unless it has a, you know some left field announcement about Litecoin ETFs or investment products, then it's going to continue to track. But there's one or two other uh, coins I wanted to show you. So IOTA had this big spike here. Um, where is it? Sorry, guys. I just wanted to show you this. So... The lending fees greatly spiked for IOTA. So how much it costs for someone to borrow IOTA on margin? Now, this is a bit of a chicken or the egg scenario. So what came first? Did everybody start to um, load up on IOTA and take shorts? So I'll just show you those IOTA shorts now that are heading towards record highs. And what this means is that it gets very expensive to borrow IOTA. All these people, you know, the amount of shorts have, have doubled in the past couple of days here. Do they know that there's bad news coming or is this speculation? All these people have started to get squeezed. So I've spoken about what a short squeeze is. Um, there was a big move today if we zoom in on the candle there. So that's what happens if those shorts are wrong. Get prepared for a massive move to the upside. Rarely are we going to see, just as I've described with Bitcoin, that there's a record amount of shorts. They're all right. There's bad news and it goes down. So all those shorts have to cover sooner or later, even if they're right. Let's keep an eye on um, IOTA and see if there's any news. Other coins we're sort of looking at. I was stalking um, Cardano saying I wanted to add it to my portfolio. I'm still on the sidelines for now. Look, this is down 90%. So many good coins down a long way, guys. I'll bring up that next... Um, crypto assets so check this out on chainfx.com some of these assets down 97 96 from all time highs there's rumors of salt going under their ceo came out and said everything's fine take that with a grain of salt i guess pardon the pun but look they're saying they're lending in three countries a lot of other coins quality coins look down the list here guys pick wisely bad projects aren't going to necessarily bounce back ever but i think good projects now represent crazy value some of these assets that are down 90 percent 
you know, with really strong fundamentals that we've covered on the channel. So be selective, um, do your research, all those usual things. Finally, I just want to leave you with this thought. So forget everything else that's happening in terms of the ETF and these um, institutions coming on board. Um, markets pricing and all available information, as I said. But think about after all this good information, who's selling? Who would panic and sell now at these levels with all the good news we've had? Or who would open up short positions? You know, is there going to be more buyers coming now that's positive news? So think about that, okay? Forget the candles and the charts. And markets can remain irrational a lot longer than you can remain solvent. So patience is absolutely the key to being a successful long-term investor. So I hope you've enjoyed that, guys. Please hit like, subscribe if you haven't already, share these videos around. And as always, thanks for tuning in, guys. Cheers.